Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. Welcome to the third part of this series where you're learning how to create the image slideshow using Greensock. In the third part, we'll create the timeline to go to the next slide, or oh, sorry, the previous slide. And we also add a little tilt effect at the end. Hopefully you've tried at least. Even if it didn't work out for you, now you can follow with me and copy and paste the go to next slide function and also the navigation click function. And we'll paste both of these blocks of code underneath. And we'll just rename the go to next slide, go to previous slide. We'll change the function to go to previous and we'll copy this inside of the navigation click function. We'll change this to previous as well. Previous slide nav pref. That's the item we want to detect the click on. And we want to exactly the same prevent default slide in slide out is fine. Here we'll need to change the next to pref pref. Okay, so we want the previous home slide, not the next one. So these are the only changes for the click event. And then we need to review our go to previous slide function. Okay, we still need the slide out slide in that stays the same. All the variables stay the same. We'll only need to tweak the timeline settings, the timeline tweens values. Okay, so the slide in will this time come from the other direction. So we'll need to reverse this to minus 100. Then we'll need to reverse the minus 15 to plus 15. We'll need to reverse the slide out to 100. And slide into plus equals 100. And also the minus 20 pixels we'll need to change to, oh, sorry, the plus equals 20 pixels, we'll need to change to minus 20 pixels. Okay, so that's the timeline reversed. And the other thing we will need to set is twin line set slide nav. Previous will be, become next. So that's the other button we want to set auto alpha to one. And then in here, twin line two, we'll change this to pref. That's the other button. And we won't, we won't be checking index equal size. That's the last item. We want to check whether it's one, okay, which is the first slide. So the if statement is changed from index equals equals size to index equals one. Alrighty, so I think this is it. Previous, just my bad spelling as well. And if this is correct, we should be able to see it going in the other direction as well. So I'm refreshing the page, going to next, and now going to previous. Okay, as you can see, it was pretty easy because we had done already the hard work working out how to animate to the next slide and to animate to the previous, it was just reversed values. Okay, nothing, no order, no, uh, timings has changed. It's only the values of the offsets. Okay, we're bringing everything from the other direction. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully, maybe rewatch this part of the video. I don't want to repeat myself too much. But all we did is just copy the two functions and the click event, and then reverse the order and change previous or next to previous and so on. Okay, so this should all make sense. As I said, maybe rewatch this part of the video if it doesn't. And the last bit of interactivity that we will add to this slider is this slight tilt effect. When you're going with your mouse up and down or left and right, you see the big hero image tilting in both ways. So rotating in 3D space. Okay, we create this very simply. We'll add it to our static slider just with few lines of code. Okay, the first thing we'll do is we'll update these numbers. 
So the current mouse position from zero, zero will update this on a mouse move. Okay, so to do that, let's go to the end of the main JS and type in dollar sign and document inside of brackets dot mouse move function opening closing brackets and curly brackets and inside of the function we'll write event as well okay now we can target the strong element inside of the bottom container so let's target dot bottom strong and we'll change the text of it to the right values okay so the first one the first zero will change to event dot page x and then we'll split it we'll add comma between these two values and the next one will be event dot page y offset okay so this should update the strong element to the right values when we move the mouse okay so let's preview this in the browser and you'll see that every time we move the mouse these numbers are changing so if we are totally on the left it's one and at the end should be 1280 or 1279 1280 is the resolution i'm recording it so 1280 768 but there is a top part of the browser as well so zero is one a zero is here and this should be around 647 yeah that's fine so this number is changing now we need to change the rotation of the hero image so we will create a twin which will do exactly that okay firstly to make it easier for us we'll detect the position so we'll create two variables detect mouse position we'll create two variables the first one will be x pos which is the x position and this will be a little calculation here okay so inside of the brackets we'll get the event dot client x divided by the window window dot width and we'll remove 0 0.5 from it okay so that's the x position and we can duplicate it change it to the y position which is event dot client y and we'll change the width to height also removing the minus 0 0.5 okay so if we console log these values console log expose plus comma and y pos we will see what it returns for us okay so that still works if we look at the console we've got few numbers coming in here alrighty so let's resize this a little bit bigger console a little bit bigger clear it refresh the page and we'll see a number 0 0.5 it's when we are all the way to the right edge so 0 0.5 it's all the way to the right and minus 0 0.5 is all the way to the left okay so it goes from minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 and the same with the top bit okay so it's minus 0 0.5 at the top and 0 0.5 at the bottom okay so these are the values we will be twinning we'll be using inside of the twin timeline light and if we scroll down i've got a little screenshot here to see more visual how this number is created okay so that's minus 0 0.5 all the way on the left it's zero in the middle and 0 0.5 so when we are with your mouse in the middle of the screen we don't want any rotation applied to it okay and then we want to slightly rotate it to one way and slightly the other way when we go to the different direction okay so that's how it's calculated
here is another more visual indication. So how the expos, these are the values and how it's uh, calculated. So the 200 and 500 is the position of the mouse. The 1024 and 696 is the size of the screen. And then we're removing the 0 0.5. Okay, so we want to make sure that it returns a zero when we are right in the middle of the screen. Okay, so that's where we're removing 0 0.5, like half of the screen. Okay, so this is it. This is the calculation of the X pos and Y pos. And now we can tilt the hero container. So tilt the hero container and we can write the tween light to move the element okay so twin twin light dot two the element will be hero we've already set this variable right at the start of the tutorial 0 0.6 will be the duration and the vars will be rotation so we will rotate this container firstly we'll set the rotation y to five times, five times the X position, okay? We'll also set the rotation X to five times the Y position. Okay, so this is the rotation, this is the CSS we'll be tweaking on the mouse hover or mouse movement and we'll set the ease to power one, ease in and out. You can play with these settings and you can see how it behaves. Okay, let's set it to ease out only. Alrighty, because we're changing the rotation, we also want to transform the perspective. Okay, so transform, transform, perspective perspective will be 900 so again you can play with the 900 value to see what sort of different effect this will give you and the other thing we'll need to change is oops I'll leave the 900 there comma is transform origin okay so transform origin will be center okay so that's the twin of our hero image. We are rotating it five times the X position and five times the Y position with a little easing on it and transforming it into a 3D space. So if we did everything right and review the page, we should see slight little tilt effect when we're going from one side of the browser to the other. Okay, so pretty cool effect, as I said, you can remove this if you don't want it on your own slider, but here is a code that lets you create the effect, which you could see on the two websites we are referring to at the start of the tutorial, which is the hardkits.co.nz and fixed group. Okay, so these two cool websites using similar effect on a mouse movement okay this one as well the smaller the number the slighter the effect the more effective it is so don't overdo it if you go crazy with the settings if you change these numbers to really big movements it will be actually too distracting okay same thing with the perspective if i change the perspective to 100 you'll see that the effect is changing completely and it's moving too much. Okay, so don't go too crazy with the setting. Anything between 800, 900 looks just fine. And also if you change the rotation to 50 times, then you completely butcher the effect. Okay, it just moves too much. If you could see that these dividers also overlapping by 200 pixels, Maybe you wondered at the start of the browse or at the start of the tutorial why we have the negative 200 pixels on it. It was just to make sure that when we rotate it, it doesn't show the edge of it. Okay, so with crazy distortion like this, it's still visible, 
That's why we set 200 pixels as the negative offset on them. Okay, so let's keep it 5 and 900. And this wraps up this tutorial. So I can actually write just a little comment. Little comment. Mouse move tilt effect. Just to complete this code. And here it is. Slight distortion on a hover. Going to previous next slide still works fine. So there you have it, a simple image slideshow using Greensock, couple timelines wrapped in the right function and run at the right time. Here is a quick summary of the whole JavaScript file. At the top we've got, a, we set up the variables of all the elements we'll be animating later on. We've got the init function which runs on the page load. And then we have a two parts. One is for the going to a next slide with a timeline and the click event. The same thing we duplicated and we've changed the order and offsets to the opposite values for the previous slides. And then at the end, we've got the mouse move tilt effect on the mouse move event. Okay, so this is a quick overview and summary of the code in the main JS. You can download the whole file and compare it to your own, clicking on the download file. So remember when we started, you could see that there is also end folder with all the files. So you can compare the index, JavaScript, main.js and the CSS, just to make sure you followed everything the right way. Okay, you should have exactly the same result as I do. And if you did, you should be very, very proud of you because this was one massive green sock tutorial. So hope you enjoyed it. And we'll quickly wrap it up for now. And that's it all for today. Hope you enjoyed this series of tutorials and hope you now know how to use the tween light and timeline light plugins from Greensock to create some image slideshow on your own projects. Okay, if you've enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this from the guy who hates tomatoes, but loves front end development. And I'll see you in my next videos. Bye. Are you enjoying this series of Greensock tutorials? And do you want to learn more about Greensock? Check out my Greensock workshop where you can learn how to build three other interactive projects from start to finish. Visit greensocktutorials.com for more details.